Hello and welcome to another episode of John Collect Stamps. Um, I wasn't intending to record today but plans have changed and I found myself with a bit more free time than I thought I had. Um, so I've decided I was going to do another episode. I've got two planned for this week. So this is the first one. And today I'm going to be talking about the Great Britain stamps of George the Sixth. If you're a British collector, or if you're new to British collecting, the simplest era um, of our monarchy to complete is the stamps of George the Sixth. Now, George the Sixth was on the throne from 1936 until his death in 1952. So it's not a particularly long reign. Um, there's a few sets of commemoratives, a few sets of, there's three sets of standard uh, definitives. There's a couple of sets of high values, but none of these stamps are expensive if you are collecting just a simplified um, collection. And if you, that's, that is, you're only getting one, one of each type of stamp. I'm not going to be covering anything like watermark variations. Uh, things like that. So, the first stamp that was issued for George the Sixth, the commemorative, was the coronation stamp from 1937. And this is the first set of definitives, all with the king's head on, in profile. Now, as I said, these can be picked up very cheaply. You know, you're talking maybe three or four pounds and then these are all unmounted mint down here at the bottom we've got a set of the higher values let me just bring the camera down a little bit and so you can see those these are a really nice uh, set so these range in value from two shillings sixpence there's two copies there's a brown one and a green one there's the five shilling red, there's two ten shilling blues. Um, the darker blue one is probably the most expensive of the standard George VI stamps. But again, when I say it's expensive, relatively in comparison to the rest of them, you know, I'm talking less than you can you can pick this set up fine used uh, as this one is for probably. 10 15 pounds so it's not an expensive era to collect at all and you won't have any trouble finding these stamps the availability is widespread the some of the definitives even from a a, a dealer you're only talking pence for a single stamp so yeah you could get like a full set here these these definitives here, these are the paler versions of the definitives. And these are from 1941, um, during the Second World War. And ink supplies were running short. So in order to save the ink and be able to produce the stamps, the, um, the stamps were printed paler, so as to use less of the, the ink pigments. Now up at the top, we've got a set, let me just tilt the camera for that, and you should be able to see those. There's a set of um, commemoratives there. Um, these are from 1940, and it's the centenary of the Penny Black. And you can see there, you've got the side profile of Queen Victoria alongside George VI. They range from half pence one pence, one and a half pence, two pence, two and a half, and a three pence. Again, not a not an expensive set to collect at all. Widely available. You'll find them on eBay. Um, mint never hinged and very cheap. Um, perhaps one of the other stamps that is a little more expensive than the others is this one here. This is the um, silver wedding 
uh, commemorative set from 1948 and you know we've got uh, two values here we've got a two and a half pence uh, and we've got this one here which is the pound you know this is one of the larger British stamps we don't normally print stamps of such size but uh, you know there are exceptions but yeah really nice stamp but even this one when I say expensive I think I paid £7.50 for that on eBay and that's mint never hinged so let me turn the page so we've got a few more sets here of commemoratives there's a set up here for the 1948 Olympic Games that were held in London and we've got a set here for the Universal Postal Union um, I'm not sure what the anniversary is on that I think it's 75 years yeah it is it's 75 years um, again these are freely available very cheap then there's a colour change of uh, the definitives again here another set of six so this is where they actually change the colour of the denominations rather than whereas the previous set that I mentioned they'd actually made the stamps paler this is actually a change of, of colour by denomination so if you look at that one we've got the the half penny orange rather than the half penny green so the colours have been colours have been switched around but again this set here even from a dealer you can pick this up for less than two pounds for that set there's another set of high values um, of four stamps here we've got a two and six a five shilling a ten shilling and a one pound but again not particularly expensive less than I, I paid less than ten pounds for these and finally this is the end see this is how quickly we've reached the end of the collection there are two stamps here these are the victory stamps um, which is um, the end of the occupation of the Channel Islands at the end of the Second World War Jersey and Guernsey were under German occupation Jer Jersey and Guernsey are British um, Crown dependencies but they are actually clo closer to France than they are to Great Britain but yeah that, that was the set so these could either be um, put in this collection here with, with George or you could put them in your Channel Islands collection you know they apply to both and then finally there's these two values here for the Festival of Britain which was held in 1951 so that completes the the entire run for George VI so it's literally four pages in in this stock book not even four pages the only thing I haven't covered um, I don't have them all is the postage due stamps which is where there's not enough postage on a particular letter and the post office fix some um, postage due and the recipient then has to pay the difference but yeah that completes the set so that's a very attainable um, complete collection so if you like I say if you are new to collecting British stamps this is a good place to start the other obvious one is Edward VIII these are the only four stamps that were ever issued for Edward VIII he was only on the throne for um, 10 months before he abdicated he ascended the throne in January 1936 
and he abdicated in the November. So these were the only the issues that were that were ever released with Edward's uh, image on them. Now I don't believe there are any other stamps in the world or in the Commonwealth that were that were actually released featuring um, Edward VIII. There were certainly designs made. I've seen I've seen those online. Um, I think they were more essays and. Uh, suggested designs but yeah as far as I'm aware these are the only four postage stamps ever produced for Edward so again these are easy to get hold of they're very cheap so that's two monarchs that you can cross off um, that's a George V collection over there I'm not going to go into George V today some of the George V can get quite expensive. Um, there's one or two stamps that I know I'm probably not going to be buying for a, a, a long time because, due to the expense and the fact that I have a limited budget. My budget for stamps is probably between 50 and 100 pounds a month. And there are a couple of George V stamps that are, you're talking three, 300 pounds plus just for the single stamps. One of those is the 1929 Postal Union um, Congress uh, one pound. Just something else to discuss. Um, if you are thinking of collecting British stamps or you are a, a novice and you've just started, you can't really go wrong with this Stanley Gibbons catalogue. It's very simplified and it's called Collect British Stamps. Now this has been published for years. They publish a, a new edition every year. Um, as you can see, it's you know it's not too thick. I'm not sure how many pages are. You know, we're talking 300 and 300 plus pages. But um, if you are a beginner for Britain, this is probably the best place to start. It does give you all the stuff that a, a typical catalogue does it tells you how the catalogue works gives you a glossary of terms even gives you guidelines on equipment things like watermarks and it discusses other things there's plenty of information in the front of this before you even get to the catalogue pages um, there you go it shows you how to how to read the entries within the catalogue but this covers everything from Queen Victoria all the way through to this one covers through this is a 2022 edition so this covers through till December 2021 the new ones just come out the 2023 edition which has all the commemoratives up to the end of this year 2022 so it is updated every year. It's only about twenty pounds. I think the app, I think that's what the RRP is. I think it's nineteen, yeah, nineteen pounds ninety-five. So, not an expensive uh, catalogue by any stretch. But one thing you will notice in here is there are a lot of catalogue numbers missing because it is a very simplified list. It's essentially one of each. So here you've got the penny black and the twopenny blue and there's only one one example of each sg2 and sg5 catalog numbers and then it jumps through to sg8 for the one of the penny reds and then it jumps straight up to sg14 for the twopenny blue that has the white lines and again, you'll see that the gaps, we've got 17, 19, 23, 24, 26, up to 40. One thing it does have, um, I know I briefly touched on previously about collecting the penny red plates. And, yeah, it's got the plate, uh, plate numbers in here as well. 
starting at plate 71. So yeah, like I say, it's very simple, but everything's in colour. It gives you an example of all the different stamp designs. And it covers every monarch from Victoria. Right up to present day. So as you can see there, we've got Edward VII. One thing it also has, which is useful, and I found it to be very useful, is a guide to da, 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 da. a guide to the matching stamps. So this has a catalogue list of this is a little bit more comprehensive than some of the other sections in this book, whereas it does actually list all the variations of the machins with their different phosphor bands. So there you've got three examples of the half pence turquoise, one with two phosphor bands, one with the side band, one with the centre band, and so on and so forth. There's, uh, there's four variations there of the one penny crimson, and they've all got their own catalogue numbers. Catalogue number is the one on the left, the ones beginning with X for these uh, particular machings. If you've seen my video on machings and regional issues, you'll see that I, I mentioned these X numbers. Um, you'll see that I cover the higher values. You'll see that I cover the um, no value indicated. And the machings with the elliptical perforations, which are the ones that have a Y catalogue number. So all of those are listed in here. You can see it in the book, it's it's got the little blue border on the page. So it does actually stand out. So this is a really good reference for machings as well. It's a good starting point. You do have to do a bit of digging about especially for some of the machings that are released in the booklets and other things but it does actually cover in here let me get to it covers prestige and sponsored booklets so there is, is some detail and it also covers things like these, The this is something I've not touched on yet, the post and go labels. It's not something that I particularly collect. Um, so I'm not really the, the person to speak to for Royal Mail post and go. It does have the postage due stamps in here as well. For the different eras, we've got like the, you can see there, we've got the pre-decimal, we've got the first decimal ones, the updated decimal ones, and then even later we've got another design, which I really like these. These are a beautiful design, beautiful set of colours on those. I do have those in, in my collection. But it also covers the regional variations. As you can see, we've got some uh, Channel Island, we've got Jersey, Guernsey, Isle of Man. We've got the Scottish and Welsh. Here's the Welsh examples. These are regional issues. We've got some of the Scotland ones there with the Scottish um, emblems. And we've also got Northern Ireland. Excuse my fat fingers there, trying to turn the pages. It does cover up things like miniature sheets as well. So, yeah, it covers the regional machings there. You can see the Northern Ireland machin there with the red hand of Ulster and the crown. So, yeah. A very cheap and effective catalogue for any beginner or even 
seasoned collector of British if you're only doing a simplified collection. You know, there is the Stanley Gibbons Concise, which has a little bit more information in it. And then you've got the the different specialised catalogues then per monarchs. There's a Queen Victoria one. There's one that features King Edward VII, George V and Edward and George VI. In what, I think that's all in one volume. I do have an older copy of that. Um, and then there are several for uh, Queen Elizabeth due to the sheer volume of stamps that were produced. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've picked up a couple of tips from here. So yeah, the, the takeaway from this is George VI is a good place to start for a British collection because you'll be able to complete that without too much trouble or expense. And get yourself a copy of Collect British Stamps by Stanley Gibbons. Like I said, the new one's out now. So if you go and have a look at this, it'll have a slightly different image on the cover. It'll have a different stamp on. So pick yourself up the 2023 edition. Well worth the 20 quid. And I'm sure it will be a helpful guide. Especially if you're new to the hobby. Or new to British stamps. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed please give me a like. Um, consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm still seeing that a lot of my viewers aren't subscribers. And you know I do want to get a few more people on board. And um I shall see you later in the week with the next episode. The topic of which is going to be affordable Queen Victoria stamps. And I'll just leave it at that for now. So anyway, I hope you had a good Christmas. A happy Boxing Day. If you're going back to work tomorrow, I feel sorry for you because I'm off this week. But um, stay safe. Keep warm, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.